Okay, so it's uh, 17 Caroline interviews. Don't forget, folks, Colin does not apologise for any content. <laughs> No apologies whatsoever. I tell the truth all the time. Ah, this is the Caroline interview. Colin Dale and Dale Richardson. Ah, on the 6th of 11th of 2012. This is part three. Uh, friends in uh, Australia. Here we go. <laughs> It's the big beat of the 50s, the magazine of the Australian Rock and Roll Appreciation Society. News, views and reviews, and the very best reading on the history of rock and roll. The latest edition of the big beat of the 50s is now out. Our cover story for issue 126, the Cockney rocker, Tommy Steele. You can read about Louisiana Hayride performer Tibby Edwards. Dog collectors will enjoy reading our update on that very expensive record by the Five Sharks. Stormy Weather. Issue 126, read all our regular columns, including CD reviews, Stars in the Sky, and much, much more. Four issues a year, the Australian Rock and Roll Appreciation Society, GPO Box 784, Carlton South, Victoria 3053, www.arras.com.au. Okay, a great um, picture here that uh, Charles uh, from Spain has sent about the, um, the sea ports, of course. Uh, a lovely picture of them still standing there after all these years. He's got, um, uh, uh, here are your sea ports. Uh, sorry, I've not been in touch with you for about nine months. But now at last, um, um, I'm without my crutches and uh, back to normal. Um, anyway, uh, give uh, all of my love to everyone who knows me. Best wishes to Malk and Roy. And uh, if Dave Such was in power, then the M6 would be fitted with carpets <laughs> to cut down on the noise. The yeah, red ones. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about Pat and Pam. Oh, Pat and Pam. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't want to say this, but David did have a penchant for... Um, council house girls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I say that in the nicest possible way. Yes, please try and keep it clean. Yeah, I, yeah. I will keep it clean. <laughs> I know you don't want the sack. <laughs> he did. He did. He, did. he seemed, He'd say, "We're going out tonight." I'd say, oh, "Are we? Where are we going?" He said, "I've got two girls lined up," and I'd say, "What do you mean lined up?" <laughs> to, to attention. <laughs> so he'd say, "Yeah." Anyway, this particular time, we went to St Albans. <laughs> Albans. Have you ever been there? It's got a roundabout. It goes two ways at once. <laughs> <laughs> mm, perhaps we better not go there. No, no. <laughs> anyway, we get outside this row of council houses, we bibs the horn, and out comes Pat and Pam. <laughs> or was okay. it Pam and Pat? I can never remember if it was Pat and Pam or Pam and Pat. Anyway, it doesn't matter. In the moment they get, and off we go to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it bird watching? Yeah, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> I was watching that. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> anyway, we get to the woods. He takes a bloody great blanket out of the back of the car and gets hold of one of these girlies. Now, I don't know to this day whether it's Pat or Pam or Pam or Pat. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And I'm left with, yeah, Pat or Pam. <laughs> Anyway, he's gone. Oh, I did say to him, I said, be very careful when you're going through those woods. I said, I've seen an awful lot of dog walkers about. <laughs> I said, you don't want any of that on your blanket. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm left with a van. I'm left with Pat or Pam. <laughs> and you know what comes next, don't you? Half an hour later, I've got the red shoes off. <laughs> 
Okay, let me just read out this uh, email from Rob Shenton. It's got, uh, after meeting with some friends in Preston Town Centre, this is the early 1960s, uh, we went for a lunchtime Coke and Burger uh, to the Caves Club, and there was Dave Such talking with club owner Clive Kelly about his Saturday night appearance at the club. David recruit, re recruited us to follow him to the town centre to get some publicity uh, for his appearance that night. Uh, he went to Walmart, running and screaming at the top of his voice, <laughs> at the shop at Marks and Spencer's. Uh, uh, he was eventually caught up with uh, several male staff and escorted off the premises uh, where the press and photographer were waiting at the door, having been advised previously about the stunt. Um, tamed by today's standards, but caused a riot in the store. Uh, this story made the late editions of the local paper, and uh, the club night was packed to capacity. Uh, David uh, was a great um, publicist, of course, and um, Rob Shenton says, a great show tonight, love Colin's story. So say hi to Rob Shenton. Hi, Rob. How you doing, man? Hope things are good for you. That's it. And, of course, uh, uh, Rob did record for that gentleman uh, in Holloway Road. Oh, did he? Yes. <laughs> Antique. Antique. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me tell you a little story about antique, shall I? Yeah, go on. You know the good lady downstairs in the shop? Oh, in, in Shenton, was it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah, in the Holloway Road. She used to sell leather handbags and all that stuff, didn't she? Yeah, that's she right. She had some quite classy clientele, you know, because an awful lot of money people around that area. Yeah, why did you buy a bag from there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got a lovely crocodile one, darling. <laughs> but this particular day, I'll never forget it. He came downstairs. No, I tell a lie. She called him down. She said, I'm having a lot of problems, she said, with that bumping, you know, the, the, the bass bump. Yeah, sure, yeah. Go, go through the floor. Yeah, she said. And my, my clients are rather classy, she said. Well, they, they were paying like 30 quid for handbag in those days, and I'm talking about 1964. You know, anyway, cut a long story short, it turned into a row. <laughs> As it would. <laughs> Yeah, and it all came out about the rent yoga, because he owed her an awful lot of money, okay. most of the time. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, you're a so-and-so, can't use the word, yeah, so-and-so. <laughs> and she chased him up the stairs with an handbag, <laughs> and he ran. <laughs> and he like, you, I you, bet there was a brick in it. Can you imagine Joe Meek running away? He <laughs> <laughs> did have vicious eyes, you know, but I thought he did. Okay, uh, going back to the uh, quiz now, Chester's got the competition right, he's in the draw, and uh, Theo Baker... Um